Do you think it's possible to decenter men and still have a healthy, intimate relationship with one? What do you think? So can we acknowledge first that as a community of women, we are not going to come to a consensus on this, like we are not going to come to one collective answer. This is an individual answer to the question. 100%. Actually, I think it's more likely that you'll have a healthy partnership with a man if you live a life where you decenter men. I think one of the reasons why it's so difficult for women to choose well when they're engaged in um, seeking romantic partnership with cis straight men is that they center everything in their lives around the pursuit of a relationship. And anytime you revolve your life around one particular aspect of your life, it's pretty unhealthy, right? It makes you a one-dimensional person. It makes you a person who doesn't have any outside interest other than that one particular thing, whatever that thing may be. It also creates a scarcity mindset, whereas, you know, everything in your world revolves around this one particular thing. If you take your eyes off it for one second, you may lose out on something. The narrative that the centering men has anything to do with men at all, right? The main um, sort of principle, foundational principle of decentering men has everything to do with self-love. It has everything to do with centering yourself as the main character in your life. Okay, I know I've been talking about this a lot lately. Please go watch both those videos. Um, those are my mutuals and they're both great. Excellent point. And I was talking with another one of my friends, Teresa, I'm gonna tag her too. We were talking about this last night about the 4B. People keep asking me to make uh, a video about the 4B movement. And I was kind of thinking of like, well, I'm not ready to do that because I, from the journalist background, I really wanna know what I'm talking about. I wanna do more research. Things keep changing. I'm not sure, la la la. Let me just tell you what I think in terms of decentering men and just tapping out on all that stuff because I can talk about that. And what, where I stand on it is that decentering men really doesn't have anything to do with men. And I made a whole video about this yesterday. If you haven't seen the whole thing, uh, it's on my I'm wearing a yellow sweater and it says pick me is, is not about decentering men, whatever. Because I give examples of what it's like to still be decentering men, which really to me is, it starts with decentering men if you were, you know, raised as a woman under patriarchy. Because they have made it so everything's about them, but it's not even about them. It is about martyring yourself and taking care of other people. And your entire existence, your, your self-worth, everything is about what you do for other people and how you see yourself in relation to other people. And usually, for women raised under patriarchy, it's about taking care of people. And usually it's men, but it's also taking care of children, taking care of men's parents, you know, taking care of everybody while men just get to do whatever. Like they don't, they don't do that. They get to be the individual and women get to be like the enablers of that individualist mindset. And that's not healthy for them. And it's not healthy for us. I want to talk about why I say decentering men because that's the baseline, but it's so much farther. And like I gave that whole example of all the ways that it, it really to me is about like where on the spectrum you are of codependency. Because what, I don't know a woman who's not codependent. And honestly, a lot of men are too. It just may look a little different because the way they're socialized in terms of they, they seek outside validation too, um, just from different roles and purposes and whatever. I focus on women because my page is for women, mostly femme, trans, or literally anyone who can learn from this. And what I think a lot of people are missing is that dating men is, if you're a woman who dates men, says that men, and you have not done a lot of work on not just like decentering men, but the codependency part. If you date men, the stakes are thousands of times higher, right? And so I think the 4B movement is a great place for a lot of women to start. Now, I am obviously married, so I can't be officially a part of the 4B movement because you're not supposed to marry. But I, I'm, I think that that's a great foundation to start is to not aspire to have kids with men, to marry them, to do, like, I understand why people are tapping out of all those things. Because if, you, if you're as super codependent and all of your value is based on validation from men, because that's what we were taught, and then you also have like any kind of background 
with like a narcissist in your household or an alcoholic or an addict in your household, any kind of childhood abuse or childhood SA, you are like a hundred times more likely to fall into that codependency spectrum like the far end of it, which is life-threatening for a lot of us. I literally almost died from codependency, which is why, why I started taking that seriously. Because it wasn't even about men, it was about my codependency. I had been able to avoid realizing how codependent I was because I just didn't date. And I think that saved my life. I didn't really date or mess with men for the most part for my 20s and 30s. And even really in high school, you know, I just didn't mess with it because every time I tried, it didn't go well. So then I'd tap out. And for those of you new here, I, 12 of my adult years were celibate, totally celibate. No kissing, nothing. Didn't flirt, nothing. Could have cared less. Now, it wasn't um, back to back. I would take, I took five years off. And it wasn't even like, I'm going to do this. It was just like, Ugh, I can't be bothered. I love life. I want to do this. I want to do this. And that's why I've had so many amazing experiences because men were not taking up so much of my time, energy, money, and they didn't derail my life and my ambitions. So I literally just was like, what do I want to do next? I like really got so much training in centering myself because I did not let men into my little world in terms of romantic partnership. And, but when I finally really dated, like dated, dated a man at the age of 36, I went you know, almost died. Like I literally like faced one of the worst consequences that you can. I mean, I got, you know, graped and stalked and all that stuff and literally almost died. And I was like, holy crap. I am so much like sicker in, in, in really looking at codependency. The chronic kind is just like an addiction. I was like, oh my God, I'm sick. I really need help with this because I had been literally trying to decenter men for 20s and over half of my 30s and then how I just went from straight into like the worst possible scenario like and as a feminist and a tough chick and a climber and all these things to and, and and you know to be known as this really tough strong woman to literally the first man I dated humiliated me was a complete misogynist and made me and I turned into like the the worst version of myself the most codependent pick me like literally put myself in danger, put my community in danger, my friends in danger, all because I just needed to save this man. It was really terrifying. And so I went back to my baseline, don't mess with men. And I really think that if you are a woman who keeps finding yourself in unhealthy relationships with men, tap out, tap out. Not forever necessarily, but for now. And this is what I realized is that when I really wanted to work on this codependency stuff, I just couldn't tap out of all relationships because you do heal in relation to people. You can't, you can do a lot of work on your own, but you can't do it all on your own. You don't get practice with healing your codependency when you're totally alone. And so I started to take baby steps on how do I, de not just decenter men, because that was, that was easy for me. <laughs> like it was decentering patriarchy, right? Patriarchal conditioning. Decentering women who center men, decentering this need to do be a good woman or a good friend, a good whatever, like the patriarchal conditioning, which is also tied to like white supremacy culture of perfectionism, um, good or bad, and all those things. So, for example, learning how to have healthy conflict where the stakes are lower with friends, uh, with coworkers like really working on this codependency thing, this abandoning myself thing, which is absolutely a trauma response. That was what I needed to do before I even talked to men. And I think that that's why I'm full support of 4B. Some women like myself, it's like 4B is almost like CPR for women who don't wanna die, right? You know what, just tap out. Tap out to save your life, right? That doesn't mean you can't ever change your mind. But until I really started getting confident in saying things like that hurt my feelings to someone I'm not dating, but rather a friend, um, you know, just someone that's in the community, that was so scary for me. And those little, little steps that built my confidence on learning how to use my voice, how to show up in a relationship, how to be honest with people, how to be genuine, how to not be passive aggressive or swallow things so that I didn't lash out later on in ways that make no sense to them and is not fair. I needed that practice with lower stakes. Because if I can't do that with friends that don't have all this power over me systemically like a man would, I think I can do that in a relationship with one.
No way. There is no way. If I don't have confidence and practice at showing up in lower stakes relationships in a way that's not codependent and self-abandoning, I have no business dating. And that's one of the thing, the reasons why I do the work I do. If people are sometimes are like, you know, for someone who's all about decentering men, you sure talk a lot about them. Yeah, because do you have any idea how much education goes into learning how to spot men who are gonna hijack your life? I had no idea. I had no idea. All of my experience is learned the hard way. I almost died learning these lessons. And so I like sharing what I learned from long, <laughs> A long life so far, I'm 46. I've had a lot of experiences with men. When I, when I finally started dating men and hooking, hooking up a lot with men and got, went into my like tender bender f uh, phase, I learned a lot about men and I learned how to, not, how to, how to center my pleasure, how to not self-abandon. And by the way, Therese and I, uh, y'all know I'm gonna, uh, this week I'm gonna be launching uh, like a new Patreon and um, I think another um, YouTube subscription uh, level for people who want like a, a different content. And so part of that is I'm gonna start doing like lives occasionally with someone mutual. And Therese and I were talking yesterday and we're gonna talk about this uh, in our live is about, you know, like for instance, schmegdual empowerment. I like women ask me all the time, well, how do you hook up without, you know, it being like a walk of shame type situation. And a lot of women will come into my comments and say, you know, uh, hookup culture or hookups don't benefit women. I'm like, speak for yourself. If you have not w worked really hard at decentering men and haven't had a lot of practice at learning how to use your voice and s not self abandon and really learn how to pause and ask yourself, what do I want? What do I need? How do I feel? Is there something I need to say here? If you don't have practice at that and you try to go out on, ten on Tinder or anything, well, I don't know. <laughs> Tinder sounds like it's a complete front row now. If you, if you try to go do hookup culture and you're still too codependent and haven't done so much groundwork of decentering men, you're gonna only have walks of shame probably. And even during my hookup, uh, like my bender of like, woohoo, right? Like all, my men, all the men were doing eating this before, you know, we were hooking up. It was all about centering my pleasure and I got so good at it. But that's because I didn't start until I walked in there like, knowing how to advocate for myself, how to stand up for myself, how to say no easily. Like old Melanie would have just let men do whatever and hooked up or what, bleh. When I, I remember hooking up with one guy and being like, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look, come all over your back, okay? And I'm like, no. He's like, oh, why not? And I was like, I'm not a fire hydrant. That doesn't make me feel good. Like, oh, okay. If I hadn't done all that baseline work, I never even would have occurred to me. I don't have to let that man do that to me. It wouldn't even have occurred to me to stop and ask myself, do I want him to do that? No, I don't want him to do that. No, don't do that. But if, you are, <laughs> if you're not like farther on the healing codependency spectrum, you got no business being in those situations and you got no business dating men because seriously, it was so hard for me to even tell my bestie, um, hey, um, Liz, I think you may have misunderstood what I said because that's not what I meant. Like, and she knows me so well that she was like, thank you for telling me that. I know that was really hard for you. Do you think someone who can't even tell her bestie, her soulmate for 20 years in starting in May, we're gonna have our 20 year celebration pretty soon. I can't even tell this person that I trust more than anyone in the world. You hurt my feelings. Why would I date? Seriously, there's no way. I, someone who has so like, so many trauma responses that are activated when I'm in a schmegdual situation. So much codependency, so much, I'm so used to like, you know, my dad was a literal narcissist diagnosed by a doctor before people even were talking about this. Drank every day, you know, got the whole addiction thing. And then my family is full of like predators and all that stuff. You think someone like me should be dating? The, the, the one that like the most high to everything, all of your insecurities are gonna be turned up. The dial is gonna turn up to the max. Think of like our stereo or I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm so aging myself. They don't look like this anymore. But when I was growing up, you know, you had actual dials and you know, like the red is like, wah, right? That's what trying to dating, dating is. It's going to turn up the dial of everything. All of your insecurity, all of your trauma response. I still freak out. If I am like emailing with an editor at a publication and they don't return my email within a day, I'm like, they hate me. I have to be like, okay, Melanie, they're busy. 
they get hundreds of emails a day. Maybe they didn't see it. Maybe they'll get back. And I have to like calm my nervous system down and, and not like be like, are you mad? You know, like have to like control my reactions so that I don't sabotage relationships at my job with my friends. I don't really write so much anymore because uh, they don't pay me. <laughs> they don't pay me enough. Uh, and this app doesn't pay me enough yet. It's coming. If I can't, it, it, if I'm having those kinds of reactions to someone that I'm not romantically tied to, that I don't have like all these hormones being released because of, and especially if you're married to them, your bank account is attached to them, you're, and if you have children with them, like the, the, the stakes are so high. So I'm telling you all this to say, I don't really believe in like rigid solutions to anything. You know, as somebody who had, you know, I was bulimic for many years, like, you know, could have very easily died from it. My esophagus was so bad. When I was getting help for that, it did not work, was like a very strict, rigid food plan approach to that. Same thing with relationship, rigid, blueprint, you know, that to me, it, it, there's no nuance in it. And it gives me a false sense of control. And so I don't believe that, ne that the 4B is for everybody, right? Clearly, because I wouldn't be married, but I fully support it. And the reason I support it is because a lot of women didn't have um, however, however many years, like 15, 20, however many years of really not centering men in my career, in my life and whatever, because I was just, you know, living my best life. Raft guide, you know, ski instructor, backpacking guide, worked in the film industry, worked on in a strawberry farm in Argentina, taught English in Chile, taught English in Spain, did comedy in New York, did comedy, like, you know what I mean? I've lived in my truck for five years. Like all the things that I did, people can't believe how much stuff I have done in just 46 years. And the answer is I wasn't dating. I wasn't messing with men. I had nothing to do with them. And because I had that baseline, when I did finally start messing with men, even though it went very extreme because I have to learn from excruciating amounts of pain for some reason before I am willing to change. I was like, holy crap, I knew in my life how amazing it was before I started dating and I saw so quickly everything was disappearing. Everything, my confidence, my community, my relationships with everyone else, my self-esteem, like literally everything I'd worked for was spiraling down so fast because of one man. And then I was literally addicted to this man. It's, it scared the crap out of me because I had had such a long, long life of of centering myself in terms of my career and just really not having to answer to men i could see this sucks i don't want this so i i it's easier to see how bad something is when you have something to compare it to but if you keep jumping from relationship to relationship to relationship you don't even know a, you don't even know yourself. You don't even know what you want, what you need, because everything's about them and validation from them and what they want you to be and what they want you to do. And then you move across the country for them or to another country for them. And because they're going to make you center them. Even the most progressive man is going to, you know, a lot of times unknowingly for, impose his will on you. And you have to be like, no, I'm not doing that. And they're like, oh, okay. Then don't think like us. They are very good at what do I want? What do I want to do here? Whereas we've been conditioned to, what do they want? What does everyone need? And then the, the final question, if we even have time for it, is what do I want? What do I need? What should I do? How do I pour into myself? How do I take care of myself? We are so not, con that is an act of revolution right there. It's to even be in that mindset. You can't be in that mindset if, if you're dealing with men. They're so exhausting. The stakes are too high. They will literally, the stakes are so, all they have to do is impregnate you. And then you, they have literally sent you on a whole new trajectory in life. So I think for a lot of women whose their whole life was built around the things we were told to care about, kids, marriage, taking care of people, this is like a huge loss. It's grief. It is like, what the hell do I do now? And in order to figure that out, just tap out, tap out, get some experience getting to know yourself. And if you have chronically codependent, Get experience learning how to advocate for, for yourself, how to not abandon yourself, how to show up in your relationships instead of just pretending like you're cool with this and cool with that and resenting all these people and being the victim. When a lot of times it was that you just literally never even asked, what do I want? He was going along with stuff. And maybe when you have that community to support you and call you on your crap and remind you of what your life was like before you started dating, then you tip your toe into that water and ask for their help, ask for their feedback and take it seriously. Make sure those, that you're also in community with women decentering men. Also, stop making choices about an imaginary boyfriend or husband. I'm gonna make a whole video on that this week.